Hey everyone, it's Char from Char's Fashion Nation. And today, since we still have an abundance of yarn, um, today for the Christmas Crochet Collaboration with Crochet and Me Too, because today is the day you start the muzzle mask for the hat. Now, I asked my friend, do you still want the muzzle mask to go with the hat? Because I just finished the gloves yesterday, and I need to do the other antler. And she said yes. So, um, as usual, I do two twists on the yarn, and then make my little slip knot. You guys always see me do this. And then we're going to do chain stitch across until it fits across the face. Um, she's, oh, let me answer this. Well, while everybody, while I was recording my video and then put it on pause, it was Rocco from Roaming with Rocco. That, that called me. So let me pause this again. <laughs> it's okay. Anyway, like I said, that was Rocco from Roaming with Rocco. Called. Get a sip of my coffee. <sighs> Death wish. Once you try that, no other coffee matters. And they're still not a sponsor. At least not yet. So anyway, like I was saying. Um, you chain stitch this until you come to a point where it's long enough to fit across your face. And you custom fit it to your face length. See, that's not like long enough yet. And my friend is smaller than me, and she's a small Italian, even though she has a condition of dwarfism. Um, I don't make fun of it. She makes fun of her, makes fun of it herself. I don't have to do it. You know, kind of like what I do with uh, my appendages. I make fun of my own appendages, like my deterioration of the disc. I make fun of it. Like my doctors will ask me, how's your tailbone? It's a pain in the ass. <laughs> but I deal with it. Okay, like this part will be along here. And you see how like that is not quite long enough yet. We have to make it obviously long enough to go over here. And um, you know, she calls herself Luffy Chicken, and I'm like, really? I thought it was more like Woodland Elf. <laughs> ah, it's hilarious. Ah, we have a good friendship. But, uh, Kicking It With Chris just uploaded um, a video, and they live in Ecuador. Oh my goodness, hun, doll, your husband Tony looks so much different now. Oh my gosh, he looks so much healthier. I'm not saying he didn't look healthy before, but for his health, for health reasons, he looks so much better. Oh my gosh. Could we make it so it just hooks up like that on it? We probably could, but that might look funny. So we'll take a few bits of this out. Oh my gosh, like Tony looks so much healthier. I know you've been on this health journey with him, but uh, yeah, he looks fantabulous. 
You both do. And I know the babies, they have a lot of growing to do. Your kids have a lot of growing to do. And their weight will come off when they grow. As they grow, their weight will come off. <sighs> but anyway, so what we're going to do with this now that we have that single crochet done. Um, we're going to take this on here and we're going to start doing a double crochet. And we're going to do this for a reason. Um, I've thought about doing a few extra like bath mitts and stuff. Maybe, um, I don't know if, if I feel like it since, um, I really like this stuff from Sun City Soaps and Candles. I really do. I like this stuff from you guys. I would love to collaborate with you. I really would. So that I could, and I would contact me on the social media, contact me so that um, I would like to do a collaboration with you so that I could give to a subscriber, a viewer, a lovely gift where um, I do the bath mitt and the um, a pair of socks and a washcloth you know and maybe even a hat I don't know we'll see maybe I'll make some slippers the bath mitt you know We'll see what we can pull together, okay? But I would love to collaborate with you guys. Um, we can pull something together. And maybe because it's festive, um, I like the gingerbread and the Santa's cocoa. So maybe if we can pull those together for a uh, gift basket, then I can do a design, a holiday design, a Christmas design for um, a viewer and uh, make the uh, bath mitt, the washcloth, the slippers, or you can count them as socks, however you want to count that, and make them in a... Uh, everyday use design but you can also wear it as a uh, holiday thing as well just like I've done with those gloves um, and maybe even add in some gloves into the mix there you go but I would love to collab with Sin City Soaps and Candles and see what we can pull together for somebody that may not have a lot. Because I know you guys might have a lot of inventory at the end of the year that you may be needing to get rid of. And um, I'm thinking, what, what better thing to do towards the end of the year but to give to someone that may not have... I don't have a lot, but I always think about, you know, what can I give to somebody? What can I get? Um, would I purchase it from you? Absolutely, in order to pull this together. Um, absolutely, I would. And that was my second thought. If, if you didn't want to collab, I would just purchase and put the whole thing together. Of course, if you won, you would end up winning your own soap back. <laughs> and I don't really think you would want to win your own soap back. Um, 
<laughs> which would be kind of funny. Um, and I really don't think you guys would want Bath and Body Works, so because that's your competitor. <laughs> There is something I can say about Bath & Body Works. I'm not into their gingerbread product for some weird reason. I don't find it attractive. Theirs, I do not find attractive. I don't know why. Their vanilla bean knoll, yes, which I have not bought this year. And I usually buy six months worth of soap and lotion from Bath and Body Works, but I don't know. I don't know. Am I going to do that this year? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. I may want to save myself like 25 or $30 by not doing that. I love Bath and Body Works. Don't get me wrong. Love them. Absolutely love them. I use their soap in my hair. That's why my hair is always so clean. And my skin. Um, although I have used the uh, eucalyptus spearmint from Sin City Soap and Candles. But I will say that I need to make myself a body mitt to use that. Um... I will say that you need a body mitt or you need a loofah to really enjoy it on your skin better than just putting it in your hand. But that's my experience. I think that's what makes the product better is if you have a loofah. Because my friend said she used her eucalyptus spearmint and she used the bath mitt that I made her and she said that made the experience with that even better. I did send her a bottle and uh, she was so grateful for that and she said that uh, your soap and lotion is you know the soap she really enjoyed one of the bottles of that, like she's enjoying it. So I didn't just purchase that for me. Anything that I bought in twos, I bought one for me and one for my friend. So absolutely give Sin City Soaps and Candles a try. They're they're the vibe. So that's why I'm saying, you know, like my next thing, I would love to collab with you because not only do I make fun things, you know, like this is going to be great because that absolutely just fits over the face. And look, I don't really think that'll interfere with your glasses. I mean, we can make it a little lower. But I don't think that's going to interfere with your glasses. I mean, this is for this part. But when I go to do it for around here, I can shape it different. So, um, yeah, think about that. And uh, we can come to some sort of deal. And maybe, just maybe, we could think of some sort of like, I don't know, maybe you want to do some sort of business deal. I wouldn't mind that. Would not mind that at all. So, see, I did the double crochet for a reason. This is going to strengthen that and let you, your skin breathe as it's brought up to the ear. You guys know how deepy yeah, I look in the hat, but I don't care. Um, I did tuck. Now, see, this is how I will ship everything, is I will tuck it inside the hat. Um, this is what I do when I ship specific things. 
You guys know, we'll recap on that. You guys know that the gloves are done. You guys know how doofy I look in the hat. Doofness. La. <laughs> I don't really care. This is for fun. Um, and this will come up right about, I would say, because you really want to take it just to the chin. This is going to come up right about here. And I'm going to make it so that the other part comes up just right about here. And that way you just have small buttons. Unless, of course, you want to have it under the chin and you take it here. That way you keep the gelled area. Sorry, I'm puffy this morning. I woke up puffy. I took my water pill. Trust me, it's not always great. So, um, yes, I'm back to looking doofy with the hat. I do have the other antler like partially stuffed and that will go here with like the bigger part pointed outward, the smaller point on the inside. No, I'm not making a gun. So it'll be like this, um, which is fine. Um, and like I said, when I go to ship everything, it'll all be inside the hat. When I go to ship her Christmas package, um, she'll not only have this, but I have a coat to sew for her. And um, I actually have to, and I, if you guys really want, I can show you how, or I might send this to her first, and um, that way she has it in time. Uh... I might just send this to her first. Um, because I have a lot of embroidery stitching to do for a uh, coat. And if you really want to see how I did the embroidery stitching for a dragon design, you leave that in the comments below. Because I really want to be able to teach you guys how to take your designs to a whole different skill level. And uh, empower yourself with your uh, skills. Definitely empower yourself with your skills. Um, and take that and be able to use it for all sorts of things. And uh, be able to, to, like I said, I help other people. Oh, that's Chris from Kicking It With Chris. I'll leave a link to her channel. She did a video today for, like, the tree lighting in Ecuador yesterday. Um, she and I have the same feeling about this beautiful horse that was used to pull Santa's carriage. And we felt so sorry for the horse because so many people crowded the carriage. And uh, we're very humanitarian about, you know, life. And uh, we are. We are very humanitarian about life. Oh, I love animals. Like, if you saw that yesterday, my video, Titten. Oh, uh, we call the animal Titten. The, the other cat, the tuxedo cat. That's the weirdest cat. He thinks he's a dog. He'll bark like a chihuahua. And if you heard him yowling, that was actually Hercules, the big furry cat. I call him a big fuzzy owl. <laughs> because he'll sit on the outside of the house and he'll literally look at you with those big yellow eyes. <laughs> and he looks like a big fuzzy horned owl. So anyway. So right here... As you see, I'm doing another line of double crochet. So, um, the only reason I'm really doing a bunch of lines of double crochet along this mask is you want to be able to breathe. That's why we're doing this in double crochets. If you did it in all single crochets, 
you're going to have a problem breathing. Breathing. You have to give yourself breathing room. Yes, you do want to make it so that your face is warm, but as always, you want to make it so that it is breathable around the face. That's why when I do these things, I think about the scientific measurements. There is a science to this and math. Um, how much room do you have to give a person to be able to breathe? What's the curve measurement of this? There is a curve. You have to think in measurements of pi. You don't think about that, but you actually do. You, you just naturally do measurements of pi when you're doing this. Wow. Doesn't take a rocket scientist. Um, <laughs> but it a lot of people don't really think about this when you're actually knitting and or crocheting. Sometimes you're actually doing measurements of pi. How many quarter measurements of pi does it take to do? And uh, and a lot of people or square. Measurements of pi and or square does it take to do a rotation measurement of this angular? And then you're like, why are we doing this? Uh, because that's how you're making that garment. <laughs> but for me, it's just so natural. I just like, poof, I'm doing this and I'm good with it and I'm okay with it and all of a sudden, dang, I whipped out a garment because my my measurements of square and pi and why. Why? Because it matters. <laughs> because all these measurements of pi and square actually matter. Look. I took the measurement of pi and made this, and I took the measurement of square and made this, and I took the measurement of pi and square to make this. Oh my gosh, there you go. You didn't even think about that. I took pi and square and made gloves. <gasps> wow. <laughs> pi and square makes gloves. Square makes a mask, pie makes a hat. <laughs> why? Because it does. Oh wait, here if we really want to get into the why, why? Absolutely. <laughs> oh, that's just the science of it all. And the math. But you didn't even think about that, did you? Oh my gosh. Char's fascination just brought that to you in a Christmas crochet collaboration. <laughs> Pi square and Y. <laughs> Gonna be like, huh? Huh? We've been doing math this whole time? Darn Skippy. This whole time you've been doing math. Well, every time you paint or draw, you you do math every time you do it. Every time. Every time. Let's say you draw an angle. An angular measurement is a measurement that is equated by pi. Let's say you... Um, do a angular measurement by square, or you do an angular measurement by pi, which is like a rounded measurement by pi, but how many parts of pi did you do the angular measurement at at a rotation point? And then you didn't think about that. You're like, what is she talking about? But did you think about what degree of that angular measurement did you draw that at? Did you do it at a 30, a 90? What 
angular measurements too. See, that's where uh, that helps. When you do that, see now, like, I squared that up. See, square, square, right there, square. See, we do square. Granny square, see, square. When you do a circle, you've done pi. Think about these things. Oh, my gosh, look, and look how much I've gotten done while just chit-chatting with you. Um, about how much of this is mathematical measurements in what we do. You know, I'm going to take this in a little by taking it over one because I think it might be a bit long. Where then I take my measurement of square and kind of round it a little bit of a square pie. You're like, would you stop talking like that? No. Because it's kind of fun. <laughs> it's still square. But it's a square round. <gasps> and it's still breathable. Absolutely still breathable. And uh, you always want to make sure it's still breathable. Absolutely. So, um, I'm glad that I can actually always bring these to you. And the other reason I kind of pulled that in is because when we come to a certain point on this and it comes up towards the middle part, that's when I'm going to bulk out this part. So what I'm going to end up doing is going around this area and just leave that part open because I'll well if I don't leave it open I'll probably just kind of just bulk it out because that's where I want to leave it for the nose and the mouth so it's more breathable so on the next round out is where we kind of bulk that like you would for a stuffed animal and that's what I really want to do for this, is bulk it like you would for a stuffed animal. Now, I could have gone ahead and done, like, the middle section for a stuffed animal face, which I could completely tear this out and redo it and start it like that. But do I really want to do that? No, not really. Not really. There are so many different ways to do this. So let me come back with that part. This is going to be a little longer video today, so stay with me. Okay, so we're back to where I'm starting the actual muzzle part that starts at the mouth. And that's where I'm going to start bulking it out right here. So I'm going to do a scallop area right here. So I have two in and I'm going to take this, do it again. And I'm going to do three here. Take this here. And this is what I mean. I'm going to bulk this area out. And what I mean by bulk it, I'm going to bulk it. You guys are going to be like, wow, you have a lot of scallops in that area. Absolutely. And the only reason I'm doing this is because you really want to work this area of the mask away from the face, not only so it's breathable, but so that you have that little shape on there um, for the mask. And then, you know, obviously the rest of the mask will lay flat. And again, I'm not apologizing for what's in the background because that's not my fault to some people can't learn to uh, not yell. So, uh, yeah. 
pretty much. So, in this part right here, I'm going to do four. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip over this one and go to the next chain. And then we'll do three in this one. Skip one. And then three in this one. Then we do four in the next one. Well, actually, we might take that back. We do four in this one, and then three, and then, yeah, because we want to make sure we have enough mask for this muzzle. Yeah, that would be right. We have to do four in this one and then three. And then, because we want to make sure that we have enough. Because then we're going to come back again over that. So this is a four. That's right. So we have to do our measurements. And they should be precise. So we skip one over. We come back. Do three. And this one, and we have four, three, four, three, three, yeah. And then we'll do our double crochets across. And then we'll come back and we'll do more of those to bulk it out even further for the face. And then I'll be back with that. Like I said, I'm not apologizing for whatever noise there is in the background. That's not my fault. If people can't be civilized, can't be civilized. Don't open your mouth. And if I decide I don't like this along the way, I will absolutely pull it back out because this will be no big deal. And then it's a restart. You know, like Juliet and your hat. <laughs> if I decide I don't like it, I'll just pull it back out until I decide I like this. I don't know. I'm starting to think that I might start with the muzzle because I think this might be in the wrong area. Yeah, that's in the wrong area. Yep, that is in the wrong area. So I, I accidentally did. Look, this is a learning thing. If you have this part in the wrong area and you should have made two of those, then there should have been... Like one here to measure out at the same for this. Then there should have been this here to equal out to this, which means there should have been a bunch of this stitching here to bulk out the same way. But that's not how that came out. 
Why does it smell like dude? It does. It smells like... It smells like dude. I don't have anyone. It shouldn't be smelling like a dude. So, yeah. I'm starting to think we should just start it over on the next one because I am teaching you guys. So, um, I did teach you guys how to do some of the double crochet again and how to bring it across to your face like this. But I'm also thinking that might be too long. Which means I'm going to have to pull all this out and then bring it back again. But you know what though? There's nothing wrong with that. Absolutely nothing wrong with it. And you know why? This is a learning curve. Absolutely. There's so much more. So, so much more to teach. Um, there's nothing wrong with pulling out the stitches and then restarting. Let, um, every day in life. There's a new learning curve for something. And you're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you're really pulling all that out. I actually am. Um, that's, that's the other noise you're hearing. <laughs> so I'm actually pulling all this out. So my rethought on this is start with the middle part at the nose of where I would put the reindeer nose. And like the little puffs. Um, and then work my way outward. So kind of like what I did with the socks. And that's my rethought on this. Um, and still do it in. Uh, start with the single crochet. Which I will show you in the next video. So until then. Because this was your learning curve. Um. Absolutely, this is your learning curve. And I'll still put this down as the Christmas crochet collaboration because this is. And don't ever give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. See? I'm positive. I'm positive that I'll keep on going. I'm positive I'll keep on going. Um, I'm also, like, positive I have things things more and more and more things to teach ya. Um as soon as I'm done pulling this out, I'll end the video. But uh that's almost there. Haha <laughs> ha, ha. You're like, really? Really? Are you sure? Look, yeah I am actually sure. Oh <laughs> you know why? Because I want everybody out there. Am I going to make you say this with me? No, not really. Not unless you want to. I want you to stay happy. Oh, my hair went weird. Stay happy. Stay healthy. <laughs> stay positive. And as always, stay blessed. And I took my seizure meds today. I don't know why I'm drooling. Um, and I want everybody to have a blessed day be well out there everything else stay positive in your life that you can achieve to strive to go forward and if you make a flu boo on a project start it over Sometimes starting over is the best thing you can do because there's somebody out here to teach you. Anyway, I'll see you later.